Dinner for two? No problem, because this classic French Chateau Briand is right on the money. It's absolutely delicious. I know you're gonna love this. Before we get started, there are a lot of moving parts in this recipe, but most importantly, it is all about timing. We want everything to be finished at the same time and hot and ready to serve up. So pay close attention. Let's get started prepping. Sound good? Let's cook. We are gonna start off by peeling 10 to 12 small potatoes. Now you do have a few options. You can use Yukon potatoes or red new potatoes. I've chosen Yukon. What you can do is peel them using a peeler or if you'd like to hone those knife skills, which I always recommend doing, use a paring knife to peel the potatoes. Once they are all done, we're just gonna hold them in a container of cold water until we're ready to cook them, so set them to the side. And now for the beef. The traditional cut is a center cut beef tenderloin. Now this one is two pounds on the dot and that's perfect for two people, so I recommend that size. And now for trussing. I definitely go into this in extensive detail in my roasted beef tenderloin, but to show you quickly, what I do is tie a few knots at the end using some butcher's twine, and then I wrap around it by putting my finger in place and then going underneath. Now you do this all the way up the beef tenderloin so that it's trussed. And the reason we do this is so that it holds shape and will hold all the juices inside. It won't just lay flat, and it definitely will do that if you don't truss it. So after you've ran all the way down, just flip the beef tenderloin over, and then we take that rest of the butcher's twine and go every other wrap that we did, just like this. And then at the end, flip it over one more time. There should be a little bit of butcher's twine left from that first knot. Then you just simply tie a double knot right into this. Secure it tight. Make sure your beef tenderloin is nice and tight. Then just grab some scissors, cut off any excess, set it to the side in the refrigerator until we need it. And now for the Bernays sauce. I have two tablespoons of assorted peppercorns. You're not gonna need that much, but whenever I do anything like this, I always use extra because I'll use it at some point in some of my recipes. Now using a cast iron skillet or even just a saute pan, what we're gonna do is ground them down. Yes, you could absolutely use a mortar and pestle for this. Once it gets to this consistency, which is perfect, some fine ground, some big chunks, we're just gonna set it to the side. I also have two fresh tarragon sprigs. What we want to do is separate the leaves from the stem. So just pinch at the top and then pinch on the bottom and pull down. We are going to roughly chop the stems. A lot of great flavor in this. What we want to do is set this to the side in a bowl. Now for the leaves. I like to roll them up just like this so they kind of all hold together. It makes it easier to cut. We are going to finely chop these. Now once they are chopped, we are gonna take half of it and we are gonna put it in the bowl with the stems. We're gonna take the other half and put it in a separate bowl, which we're going to use to garnish our Bernays sauce with. I next have one shallot, but we're only going to use half of it. That's all we're gonna need for our sauce. So after you slice off the end, slice it in half, remove that outside peel, we are gonna small dice that half shallot. Again, this is all we are going to need for our Bernays sauce. Once it is small diced, set it to the side in a separate bowl. I've got three eggs. I need three egg yolks. That's it. So crack your eggs. You can bobble it back and forth with the two shells that you've cracked, or you can just run it through your fingers. Totally up to you. Once the eggs are in a bowl, set them to the side. And then I always get this question. When you have leftover egg whites, don't get rid of them. Put them in the refrigerator. You can make an egg white omelet. Totally delicious. The other things you'll need are some white vinegar, and some clarified butter. I have a great demonstration of this in my Eggs Benedict video or on my website. Now, fill a pot halfway with cold water. We're gonna turn the heat on to low, get that water heating up while we do everything else. In a medium-sized saucepan, we're gonna add in a quarter teaspoon of the crushed peppers that we did, all of the half shallot we diced up, and then the bowl with the stems and tarragon leaves in there. We're next going to add in a quarter cup of white vinegar. If you only have white wine vinegar, totally fine. Let's crank the heat onto medium. Start stirring this around. It's gonna cook very quickly. We wanna cook it to off-sec or almost gone. There should be about one tablespoon of vinegar left. Take this off. Let's go have a look at our water, those little bubbles at the bottom, perfect temperature. 
we're going to add a large metal bowl on top of it to create a double boiler using a rubber spatula. Scrape all that goodness of shallots, pepper, tarragon, and vinegar into that double boiler bowl. Next, add our three egg yolks. Get your arms ready because it's time for workout. We are going to vigorously whisk this until it becomes creamy and white and fluffy. Okay, really quickly, don't mean to interrupt you here, but if your eggs start to scramble just a little bit around the outside of that bowl, immediately turn the heat down, take the bowl off the heat, put on your countertop, vigorously whisk, you will be just fine. If you've gotten to this point and you already have scrambled eggs, well, enjoy breakfast, my friends, because you need to start it over. Okay, on to the next step. Keep vigorously whisking this. Let me show you what the consistency should look like. It's going to be white. It's going to be fluffy, just like this. It will be creamy already and a little bit thick. Perfect consistency, no scrambled eggs. Remove it from the heat, go over to your cutting board. We are gonna pour in a total of three quarter cup of the clarified butter. Do this in little batches, like a few tablespoons at a time. If you see it starting to get really thick, just squeeze in a little lemon juice or some of the hot water from the double boiler, maybe just a tablespoon of that. This is perfect consistency. Now what we wanna do is strain it through a fine mesh strainer or a chinois, and I'm doing it in a glass bowl because it will hold heat a little bit better than any other container, so be sure to use this. Using that rubber spatula, press down through the chinois or strainer to get all of it out of there. I even like to scrape the outside just to make sure I got it all. The sauce is really good and it takes some time. Next thing we're going to do is add in a little bit of cayenne pepper to taste. Totally up to you. This is maybe an eighth of a teaspoon. Next, we're going to add in the tarragon without the stems that we finely minced. And then we're just going to add in a teaspoon of finely chopped fresh parsley. Season it with salt and then squeeze in just a bit of lemon juice. This is about a teaspoon and a half of lemon juice. Using a spoon, just mix it until it is combined. Should be a nice creamy sauce. It will thicken up as it sits at room temperature. We're going to wrap it in plastic wrap and set it to the side. Now you have 90 minutes to finish everything else because that's how long that Bernays will hold for. We only need about 45 minutes, but you have 90 minutes. That's your warning. Let's get started on everything else. It's going to move quick. Here we go. Let's start by straining our Yukon potatoes and give them a little shake once it's in there. Get all the water off. If you need to use a paper towel, totally fine as well. Set them to the side because in the meantime, we are going to add in one tablespoon of clarified butter or you can use any oil that you'd like. Turn the heat to medium high. Get that cranking. Once it begins to start smoking, it's time to start cooking. So add your potatoes in there. What we want to do is get a little bit of a brown on these before we put them in the oven. So think of it as sauteing. This is the perfect technique for sauteing. We have hot oil. We're moving the pan around, getting that brown on them, and it should look just like this. A total of maybe three minutes. Now what we're going to do is transfer this into the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. It's going to take in between 30 and 35 minutes for these to finish cooking. Great timing because now we can go over to our beef. What we want to do is generously, and I mean generously, season it on all sides with salt and pepper. Now when you season on a plate, you of course don't get salt and pepper all over it. You get it on the sides of the plate. So I always roll it to the sides so that seasons it up very well. So again, season the backside with salt and fresh cracked black pepper. Give it a quick roll with some tongs just to get all that excess salt and pepper on the plate. Perfect. Head over to a cooktop in a very large saute pan. I'm gonna add in two tablespoons of clarified butter. Again, you could use oil. Let's crank the heat up to medium high. Once it begins to smoke, just like with the potatoes, we're gonna add our beef tenderloin in there. Let's turn the heat down to medium once we add the beef in there. We're next going to add in two tablespoons of unsalted butter. Next, we're going to hit it with four garlic cloves. You want to add a few more, totally fine. And then next, five to ten sprigs of fresh thyme. This is going to help season up that butter as it cooks. Now, it is going to take in between two and a half to three minutes per side for this beef tenderloin to get a perfect golden brown. And when I mean all sides, I mean all sides, not just top and bottom, also the sides. This thing should be completely brown before we put it in the oven.
Okay, our beef tenderloin looks perfect. Going in the oven at 350 degrees, going to take in between 15 and 20 minutes to reach medium rare or 125 degrees Fahrenheit internally. Once it's there, let's take that out of the oven. We're gonna set it to the cutting board to rest for about four to five minutes. Let's also not forget the potatoes. They are done at this time. It's all about timing with this recipe. This recipe is a reminder why classic fundamental cooking techniques are just so dang important, especially when it comes to timing. Knowing when everything's done so you can serve it up, taking the time to brown up that beef tenderloin, your potatoes, knowing you have 90 minutes to hold for that Bernays sauce to make everything else. I'm telling you, when you put these things into practice over and over again, it will absolutely elevate your everyday cooking and the homemade food from scratch that comes from it who would want to go anywhere else other than your house? It is so delicious. However, we need to finish up the potatoes. We need to carve up the beef. We've got a few things to do to serve this up. Pay close attention, because here we go. Let's finish off the potatoes. We're gonna add two tablespoons of cold unsalted butter, one tablespoon of finely minced fresh parsley. Of course, let's not forget to season it up very well with salt and fresh cracked black pepper. Then simply move the pan around to coat the potatoes in the butter, parsley, salt, and pepper. Perfect, set them to the side. Let's go over to the beef. Please remember to remove the butcher's twine. No one wants to eat string. And then slice very thick slices all the way down. You'll see it's a perfect medium rare internal temperature. Excellent. For plating up, serve several potatoes on the plate and then layer on several slices of the beef tenderloin and then top off with our Bernays sauce. Amazing. Let's get in this.